Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. And hey, the season may be over for Dallas Cowboys, but there's still football to watch if you want. You know, there's playoffs, Pro Bowl coming up. Um, but with our Dallas Cowboys, it's really never a dull moment. Um, that's why I love my team. It's always news. There's always something going around, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. It's always something to talk about. Um, as we head into our offseason, I should say, um, there's a lot of things coming up. The uh, Cowboys are, uh, the staff is coaching in the Pro Bowl this year. And uh, speaking of Pro Bowl, uh, Leighton Vander Esch is now going to the Pro Bowl. Um, it was announced, I think, last night, something like that. Um, Luke Keekley backed out. He doesn't, he's not playing. Um, I guess he's probably nursing injuries and stuff and just doesn't want to play you know guys like that that's been in the pro bowl multiple times it's, it's nothing to them anymore it's like yeah it is what it is i'm in the latter part of my you know let in a career let the younger guys have fun and go do the pro bowl so shout out to Leighton vander Esch for that um the wolf hunter out there um 102 tackles two interceptions for the season uh, i think he's second um, in tackles, on, I think among the linebackers this year, um, which is big praise. Um, first, first on the team that is, I believe, and um, he's the first rookie defender for the Cowboys to go to the Pro Bowl since Everson Walls in 1981. And we already know what kind of career Everson Walls had back in the day. I mean, he had what 24 interceptions, like. I don't know if it was in the season or his whole career, but um, I got to go back and look at that. But as we know, Everson Walls has been snubbed for, from the Hall of Fame for years. And I think that now it's too late for him. I think he has to go into like the senior category at this point, um, which 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 sucks. But, you know, show some love to Everson Walls, man. I mean, nobody's making interceptions like that in modern NFL because things changes, rules changes. Uh, the rules change. You can't hit people like you could back in the day, and everything is a PI. So <laughs> it's it's you know they're protecting the players on offense, and I understand that. But shout out to Leighton Vander Esch, um, rookie going to the Pro Bowl. I think it's awesome. He had a great year, and he's gonna have great years to come. Now, um, the person that he's replacing, Sean Lee, actually said that he's. Well, he was mulling retirement, but he's at the point right now where he's deciding what he wants to do, whether he wants to come back another year. Remember, he still has one more year on his contract. Sean Lee is due $7 million um, if he comes back, but I don't know if the Cowboys are going to want to pay him that. Now, he could come back in a reserve role, and he knows it would be a reserve role. He wouldn't be a starter anymore. Um, he could come back on a reserve role. They can minimize his contract or... They could cut him in this offseason and just get that extra seven mil to get another player or do some other things with it. You know, sign another player like Cole Beasley or whatever you want to do. Um, you look at you look at that with Sean Lee and it's like, OK, um, you know, I, I love the guy, but, you know, he's just been injured prone throughout his career. And like I said, what he said himself was, you know, I have to reevaluate myself see what my injuries are, and make my decision based off of that. And like I said, he's a stand-up guy. I would love to see him come back if he does retire. I would love to see him come back and help out Ben Bloom with those linebackers. I think that would be great for him. Um, I, I I wish I wish Sean Lee well. You know, I'm not one of those fans that, like, some, some of our fans are real cold. Like, you know, as soon as a player starts dwindling or, or he's not putting up the production that he did before – we quick to forget what they've done for the team. And I understand that like, this is a, what have you done for me lately, but I'm, I'm more of a guy that appreciates good hard work. And, you know, Sean Lee has been all that and more for this team. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, he had hamstring issues. I mean, you know, it's chronic and you know, this is nothing that he did personally himself to make that happen. His body just failed him. And a lot of players had situations like that where, you know, their career was cut prematurely or whatever the situation is. But, you know, I, I'm, you know, it, it sucks for him, but he's still, you know, been in the league nine years. This will be his 10th if he decides to come back. But whatever he does, I do wish him well. Um, as far as Cole Beasley goes, um, we did lose in the playoffs and in the di divisional round, and that sucks. But Cole Beasley, early this morning, he just brought in 
um, welcoming his third child. Now, it's funny because the second child was born, I think, the same day last year or I'm sorry, two years ago. So um, which was right after divisional loss. So it's so it's going to be uh, when their birthday comes again next year. I guess he can do joint birthday parties. I guess that'd be kind of cool. But, um, you know, shout out to Cole Beasley for welcoming his third child. That's awesome. You know, bringing a a child into this world, you know, this cold, cold, cold world. And, you know, I think that it's important for parents to be there for their kids, you know, mother and father, whether, you know, the couples are together or not. You got to take care of your kids because these kids right now are our future. And when we get older and die off, they will be the ones running this world. And we have to make sure that we teach them. And, and, and so they learn things. And that way, when they get older, um, they are able to uh, be mature and, you know, take on the responsibilities that, you know, our parents and we leave behind. So, you know, that's just big for that. So shout out to him for that. Congratulations on your third child. Now, um, <clears> there's <throat> been speculation about um, Scott Linehan leaving the team. Now, um, well, staying, I should say. And everybody went into a frenzy when Jason Garrett said that. And I said in the last video, and I mentioned, I think Mark, Mark mentioned something about it too. But one thing that you can't do, a lot of that is white noise. You know what I mean? Like Jason Garrett is going to say whatever to the media. You know what I mean? Like that's not always what the situation is. And of course, it looked like he backtracked because when they talked to Stephen Jones and um, Jerry Jones, the conversation was much different, you know, but... You got to watch, you got to listen to what Jerry says and you got to, well, more so Stephen Jones, because Stephen Jones right now is that, that crypt keeper. He's that, he's that guy that's going to come in and he's like, look, I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm not going to hold no cut cards. It is what it is. But again, they're not going to tell the media exactly what moves they're making because you can't do that. Um, especially when it comes to firing somebody, you can't just be like, oh yeah, this guy's gone. We're going to fire him next week. But, um, Based on reading between the lines of what Jerry said, and you guys can go back and look at that um, that interview with him on 105, 103, 105, The Fan, something like that. But yeah, um, he basically was saying that, um, you know, things are up in the air right now. He was, you know, talking about um, looking at other teams and what they're doing with their offense and how creative they are. You just read between the lines. I mean, it's some of the same things us YouTubers were talking about, too. It's just like, you know, we watch these games all the time. We see what these offenses are doing, and i.e. the Rams, how the Rams were able to just stop everything we were doing, and they just took our strengths and made it a weakness just for that game because Sean McVay and, and the rest of his staff, creative minds, watching tape on us and just – coming up with a good game plan. I mean, you know, that that that's coaching right there. And, you know, we have been very conservative for a long time, and a lot of our fan base is pissed off. And trust me, I'm just as mad as you guys are, but as a YouTuber, I can't go crazy. You know, I have to, I have to be the rational one to talk things out as well. But again, I'm human. We all have feelings. I love my team just as much as you guys do. And, and I will say that, you know, it's very disappointing. And just to see things like that and even like the people that work for the Cowboys like Nick Eatman and and Mickey Spagnolia and Brian Broaddus and all of them when you look at them they you know I don't watch them a lot but you know when I do hear some of the stuff that they say you know they're awesome I've, I've met all of them in real life they're very cool um, people but my whole thing is this I look at it like this you know they can't say but so much and I know what they really think and they basically think the same thing I think like look you know you got to with the exception of Nate Newton, you know, he played for the team, so he's going to say different things. But, um, you know, you got to change that coordinator. You know what I mean? Like, I'm okay with Garrett being the coach as long as that coordinator changes because you can't have two conservative guys on your, with your coach and your offensive coordinator because it's an unequal balance. You see what we have on defense with Chris Richard and him being aggressive and being in the player's face. We need something like that on offense. We need somebody to put a fire underneath these guys asses and keep these guys moving and chucking along because at the end of the day we have talent on this team you know what i mean like some of these games that you know the player execution sucks yeah 
it was. You look at the Colts game, they dropped a goose egg. You look at the Rams game, they dropped a goose egg. But, you know, there's all types of different factors that play into that. And we've seen this team be up and down, not just this past season, but for years. I mean, come on now. We were looking, trying to get into the NFC title game. We haven't got one since 96. And, you know, the fan base is tired, and I understand it, and it sucks. And the most importantly, all you hear on the outside of it is rival teams talking crap, even the ones that didn't even make the playoffs, like the Redskins, primarily the Redskins. Their, their, their fans are ridiculous. And me living in Maryland and in the DMV as a whole, like I have to see this and hear about this all the time. And it's like, you know, all I hear is, Oh, y'all ain't do this, y'all ain't do that. But you guys didn't even make it to the playoffs. Like, you know, you guys had a bunch of injuries and stuff. And, and and you know, I was, and I actually gave them their team credit. And I didn't even, you know, most, some other fans, uh, you know, kick a, kick a team when they're down. I'm not one to do that. Like, you know, I feel like the Redskins would have been hella competition for us if they didn't have, if they didn't lose their quarterback and had all those injuries. But, you know, I, I gave them their props. But at the end of the day, they're still a rival and we all hate them. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Mark Colombo. Um, he got re signed. So he's coming back to the team. Um, I don't know what the contract details. I don't think they really said much about it, but it doesn't matter. Mark Colombo is coming back at offensive coordinator. I'm excited about that. I mean, offensive line coach. Um, he did he did good um, when he came in halfway through season when they um, fired Paul Alexander. But you look at what we have right now. Mark Colombo, uh, Mark Colombo knows these guys. These guys know him. They love him. And, you know, he has the best voice in that room when it comes to his offensive linemen. And even when uh, with all the injuries and things, you can see um, how better they were at blocking and just – Sim being more simple with with the playbook and you know getting these guys to do things that they that they know how to do and the strengths of their strengths not make them do things that they're a weakness at you can't do that and expect them to pre um, prevail it's not going to happen now travis frederick um he's supposed to be getting surgery on his labrum um so hopefully that that help out with um with him coming back this off season they said that it's a possibility he could come back this off season I'm not going to get my hopes up and because I mean I love Travis Frederick and but you know he's he's got that syndrome that's never going to go away that's we he has to deal with that for the rest of his life and that's one thing that we have to take into account that Travis Frederick might come back but he might not be the same Travis Frederick you know I, you know, I, I would love for him to come back I would but me personally as a as a human being first but put football aside I want to see that Travis Frederick is is good first. I want to see that, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a husband, he's a father. You know, I want to see that, you know, he's good before anything else. You know, us as fans, we get, we get selfish sometimes. We just be like, oh, it's football. It's all about football. Yeah. Yeah. In, in some aspects, but it's a human factor element to it too. We're all human. You know what I mean? Like we all have things that we have to do in our personal lives, especially when it comes to health. I don't play with health. Like, you know, if I see somebody, you know, hurt and stuff like that, I'm like, I'm not going to make fun of them because you look at what if that happened to you? What if some something like that happened to somebody close to you? Like, you know, you know, that that, you know, that sucks. Travis Frederick is one of our best offensive linemen. And you can tell the difference when he wasn't there. You know, he called he he did the line calls and it was a little rough at first, but I got to give it to Looney. Looney came in and did his thing. But, you know, hopefully we get Travis Frederick back this um, next offseason. That would be awesome um, with him coming back. And then Mark Colombo, you know, putting implementing more of his plan in there because now he knows he's secured at that job. I, I really think that this offensive line is going to be stout again next year. It's going to come back to its glory. And, and that's something to hang your hat on. You know, we got Ezekiel Elliott. Maybe, you know, they were talking about trying to go into the draft and getting a late round running back, somebody that has the potential to do some things. But I look at it like this. You still got Rod Smith. Me, I'm not. I'm not giving up on Rod Smith. I think Rod Smith is a, is a pretty decent running back. He, he can do a lot of different things. But, again, that's Linehan. He's not coming up with things to do to help these guys do different things. Like I said, look at what we did in 2016. We used Rod Smith a lot. And I understand that, like, you know, um, you know, last year, Ezekiel Elliott with all that stuff going on and blah, blah, with the 
with the, him being suspended. But they still use Rod Smith. They used him when he was there his rookie year, and when Ezekiel Elliott was there his rookie year, and they used him when Ezekiel Elliott was suspended. So it all of a sudden this year is just like they forgot how to use him. You got Jama you got a fullback that's actually really good. The the Raiders used Jamez Olawale very well. I think he had like a 72 yard uh, catch and run for a touchdown. Like he could catch the ball at the backfield. He can he can block very well, um, and he can run the ball himself. He's a triple threat. I mean, we could have used him kind of like how the Rams use C.J. Anderson. You know, just get that guy in there, and just bowl people over. But we choose consistently to not do the right thing and that's what's frustrating to me more than anything you know we lose some games and I'm like we could have won that we could have won that with better play and and a lot of times better execution from the players too but it has to be um a, a contingency plan if we're going to come in and make adjustments that communication has to be clear between Dak the offense um um the offensive coordinator or Rob Marinelli, Chris Richard, and the defensive guys, you know, whenever they're on defense doing their thing and they're, you know, and they're not doing what they're supposed to do or tackling and things like that. But again, these coaches have to, you know, do these things. I, I, I love what I see on defense outside of that Rams game. I don't really have much criticism to say about our defense outside of what the hell happened in that Rams game. But, um, you know, we can use some more pieces on defense. We we need a safety. You know, I, people talk about Earl Thomas, but I'm telling y'all right now, they're not messing with Earl Thomas. They're going to find a young guy or they may even find a young guy in free agency. Who knows? Somebody that's um, cheaper than Earl Thomas. But um, I don't know. <clears throat> Me personally, having Earl Thomas talent on his defense would solidify what we have because Chris Richard is still here. I've always said that before, but I'm not going to speak on Earl Thomas because I'm really tired of it. It's, it's getting stale, but um, but that's how I felt, feel about that. But that's that's to the extent that I'm going with that. But you look at everything that's going on this week. Like I said, we just lost last week, and they're already making moves. I mean, I guess you could say it's never too early. Cowboys got to get ready to coach the Pro Bowl. Um, senior Bowl is coming up. Um, it's a lot of things happening. Next you snap your fingers, the draft will be here, y'all. So um, this offseason, just to let you guys know, those of you that, that's been with me since the beginning, if you guys remember uh, when we went to the draft last year, I did some draft analysis with DMV. I did some things with Vosh Lombardi, especially when we were there. I got to holler at him. So um, I'm definitely probably going to call Vosh because I definitely want to do some joint videos with him, maybe Skype in because he's in Houston. So, um, But I look at it like this. Um, this year is going to be huge. Um, we're still going to be doing things this off season. Um, probably in my either my next video sometime throughout this week, I'll start talking about um, you know the the uh, the free agents on the team and who should go, who should stay, who I think that the team is going to keep or, or let go, and things of that nature. We already know one, and that's David Irvin. I'm pretty sure he's not coming back, so we could just go ahead and say bye-bye to that one um, because they got bigger fish to fry. And, you know, when you got a guy that doesn't want to play, that decision is very easy. So that's what is, that's just, that's just how I look at with that. Um, and then we'll be doing draft analysis. So I'm about to start doing my research um, on these guys coming out of the draft this year. I think there's... Out of 31 teams in the NFL, I think that there's only like 19 real first-round picks coming out of the draft this year. So it's going to be a little sketchy. But Cowboys don't have a first-round pick, so it doesn't matter for us. So um, as I look at, um, I don't think we're going to get any comp picks either. If we do, maybe one. But we're not going to have as many as the years past. Like we had four last year. But um, it's funny because I think Dak Prescott was a compensatory pick. Hmm. Interesting. Um, we should probably get one. I think I think we're due one for was it for Anthony Hitchens for losing him. I think that's one. But outside of that, I don't see us getting any more because we we haven't really had we didn't really lose anybody that really did anything. I mean, Orlando Scandrick don't count because they were, they I think they released him. So it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so we'll be doing the draft analysis. I'll be doing my research um, starting now, going forward. So it'll be fun this off season, guys. Just stick with us, and uh, we'll be doing the damn thing. So uh, with that being said, y'all, it's your boy E2 Blue, always keeping it real. I'll talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a great hump day.